Thank you, and uh, thanks for the organization. So today, well, what we are going to talk about is about Gibbs CV states and uh, applications. This is a joint work with Master of Vienna. <laughs> so the map we are starting is uh, a map which admits a dominated split. This map, it has a detection space split to two bundles, E and F. The E bundle is called the CS bundle, and the F bundle is called the CU bundle. This means the vectors in the direction F is expanded much more stronger than the direction E. <coughs> so this is the map we are going to study. So it's only a C1 map, and uh, maybe not, uh, <coughs> it's maybe not a different morphism. And we can see the potential. This potential is minus log of the determiner of the tangent map along the F direction. When the map is uniformly hyperbolic, it has been studied quite well. It's a standard potential. And because in our case, this F is not a uniformly hyperbolic, so we call this is a CU equilibrium states. <coughs> so we need to give more definitions. So for any measure, inverted measure, we need to define star entropy. What's a star entropy? The, yeah, it's a little complicated. You consider any sequence of inverted measures converged to mu, and you consider the limit sweep of the sequence of the metric entropies. So which is, not just, which is in general, is larger or, larger or equal to the metric entropy of the mu, because you can always take the sequence mu n the same measure mu. <laughs> and the star entropy, why we do this? Is because in general the metric entropy is not semi upper continuous. And by this new definition, we get the star entropy, and the star entropy automatically is larger as a semi upper continuous. And then at the standard way, we can define the star pressure. The star pressure is exactly the uh, star entropy plus the integration of the potential, which we introduced above. <coughs> so what's the definition of CU equilibrium states? Exactly the measures, invariant measures, the star pressure is large or equal to zero. Okay. So first we need to say that the bundle E can be empty. If the bundle E is empty, the direction F, the F bound is a tangent space, and then the phi I, the determine the, the, the tangent space on the F is that the tangent map. And the second thing is that the metric entry, the star entropy is a upper semi-continuous function. And uh, in the end, is the CU equilibrium state, this space is a convex compact space. Maybe empty, but if it's not empty, the space should be convex and compact. So today we are going to study this space and uh, give applications on it. Okay, we copy the definition. So the main result, brought by me and uh, Viana several years ago, is that for almost every point x, and uh, you consider the sequence of measures, we know that any limit of the sequence should be a inverted measure. And uh, so the limit soup is uh, any, any convergence, any, any sequence of convergent sequences, this limit should be contained on the equilibrium states. <coughs> so in particular, this explains to us the space, the equilibrium states, this space is not empty. Okay. Today we, we are not talking about the proof, because this proof will give some ideas, but this proof is quite simple. And in the dimension one case, this has been proved by Keller. And uh, when this map is unknown solved, it's proved by a Chinese guy called Hao Chu. And uh, so we proved it in a map with dominant splitting, okay, without any hyperbolic assumption. 
So where we would like to start in this space, the CU Gilliam states, as we all know that we, in general, we would like to start in Gibbs U states, not the Gibbs CU states. So the problem, what's the difference? No, so why we would like to start it? The problem like this following. So mu is a, suppose, what's the definition of physical measure is the following? The physical measure is a, a measure whose basin has a positive Lebesgue measure. So we can see that on its basin, this sequence has, is converged, is converged, and this limit converges to the same measure mu, so automatically by our main result, this measure should be contained in the uh, CU given state spaces. So it shows to us that the physical measure always containing the CU given states, so this space would be a good candidate for us. So here I would like to give a very quick application about this result. It's like the following. <laughs> we can see the map F, say infinite map from M to M. It's a say infinite map. And we could su suppose P is a fixed point. of F, and the determiner of the tangent map TF on this point P is larger than one. Okay, we well, suppose it's larger than one. It's a map, not a diffue. So we claim dot P, the atomic measure cannot be physical. It cannot be a physical measure. <laughs> okay, the proof is quite simple. Why it's not that it cannot be physical? Because we have said any physical measures should contain uh, in the CU, it should be a CU equilibrium state. So now we would like to show the atomic measure is not a CU equilibrium state. So how to prove it? Because it's an atomic measure. The entropy, oh sorry. So first, because this is the infinite map. Since it's the infinite map, the metric entropy is asymptotic entropy expensive, the metric entropy is semi-upcontinuous. Since it's semi-upcontinuous, the star entropy coincide to the metric entropy. Because it's a infinite map, the metric entropy should be semi-upcontinuous, proved by uh, Yarding and the Newhouse and the Busey. Okay, so this explains to us what? The metric star entropy of the direct measure coincide to the metric entropy should be zero. Okay, so what's the potential? The potential for F minus log determinant of the tangent map on it. Since we suppose the determiner is larger than one, it implies the potential should be smaller than one. Okay. So we consider the pressure, star pressure, the star pressure, the star entropy, plus the integration of this one. So So this is plain to us for any say, infinite map. So for any fixed point, if the determinant is larger than one, then this point atomic measure cannot be physical. Okay. Here we need a super say infinite. For in the CR case, we don't know if it's true or not. And there is no any counter example. I think it may be true. Surely exist some counter examples for this. Okay. So now let us try to give more applications. So we need to see, we need the star entropy and the plus the integration of potential should be large or equal to zero. Okay. So now let us try to re give the first application. This is some is our result somehow a little old, proved almost in the 70s. Is a result like the following. 
you can see the uniform expanding map of a circle. Uniform expanding map of a circle, it has been proved by Kambe and Guas. The C1 generic map, uniform expanding map of a circle, it meets a unique physical measure, and whose basin has a full volume. So this is somehow a little amazing, because uh, we know that in order to get a physical measure, in general, we need to put the map to be C1 plus alpha to get the, to get the distortion control. But here, we don't need the such kind of something C1 generic. So how to prove it? The argument is very easy. What we need to prove it is we need to show it admits a unique CU Gilliam state. If, so let's record the result here. Look, because almost every point in this limit will always contain the CU Gilliam state. So it means any, any convergence, any limit. Any limit. OK. Any convergence limit. Maybe not a unique, right? So how to prove? How to prove it has a unique physical measure? The idea is very easy. We only need to show the equilibrium state contains only a unique element. If it contains a unique element, every point they have to convert to the same measure because it's unique. And this measure should be physical measure. So this is the argument. Of course, they don't use our result. They use Kelly's result because Kelly's result is in dimension one case. So now let us try to give the proof very quickly. So our proof is different than the original one. It's much more shorter. And uh, their proof depends on the conjugation. So now let's try to give some very short proof. Suppose first we consider C2 map. C2 map and uh, the star entropy consider the metric entropy. Because why? This is uniformly hyperbolic. Uniformly hyperbolic metric entropy automatically seems up continuous. The metric entropy, the star entropy, and the entropy are the same. Okay. So, by the definition, if it contains in the equilibrium state, the metric entropy, the star entropy, plus the potential should largely equal to zero. This implies the entropy large or equal to the, the integration of log or tangent map. And the second one is exactly the Lyapunov burnet. Is exactly the Lyapunov burnet because it's one dimensional. So this is explained to us for any C2 case, equilibrium state, the metric entropy should be larger or equal to this burnet. Okay. From the definition. And another way, by the real inequality, the metric entropy should be smaller or equal to this burnet. Should be smaller or equal to this burnet. This is explained to us what? Is we get the passive formula. Any Element, any measure in the equilibrium state which has to satisfy the passing formula. If it satisfies the passing formula, then by ledger B, Helix, and Young, which should be absolutely continuous with respect to the unstable uh, manifold, passing manifold, because here we assume C2. Okay. And the in fact, which is a unique physical measure as what we know has absolute continuous respect to Lebesgue. So this explains us to what is if we suppose some irregularity, suppose this map to be C2, then the equilibrium state is unique, and the unique one is exactly the physical measure. Okay. So now we go we, we are go from C2 to C1. We consider the map from the uniform expanding map to the equilibrium state. This is from a different uh, map to the measures, the set of measures. This, this map is semi upper continuous. Why it is semi upper continuous, we can see this. You suppose you have Fn converged to F. You have mu a belong to the equilibrium state of Fn. What do we get? The metric entropy plus the integration of phi Fn b mu n larger or equal to zero. We suppose that mu n converge to mu zero. Because we know that the metric entropy is the same upper continuous function even with respect to the diffuse. So we know that also. 
So if we have a sequence of equilibrium states for different moments and Fn, and its limit also should be a equilibrium C equilibrium state. This shows that this map is the same upper continuous function respect to the Hausdorff topology. So generically, we have continuation. If this is a generic subset such that the every different moment inside is a continuous point. If it's a continuous point, it implies what? It implies it can only have contain one point. Because why? C2 maps are dense. Every C2 map has one image. So it's a limit should have one image. OK. So by this short proof, we show that C1 generic uniform expanding map, it contains a unique C equilibrium state. And as a corollary, this measure should be physical measure, whose basin cover four or big measure subset. OK. So this is the first application of uh, about the Keller's result. And the proof is very short and quick. So now let us try to study. And a similar result on hyperbolic attractor was proved by the Chinese guy called Hao Chu. So C1 generic and also map, it has a unique physical measure whose basin cover for the memory subset. Okay. But both of the proofs use the conjugation, but the proof here is much more shorter. So now let's try, uh, let us try to play something new. Because that's two results uh, were known a long time ago. So we consider uh, still a map of a circle, CR map, with a unique neutral fixed point. So this is, now the map has been changed. The map should be like this. I read this on interval, considering, considering the circle the same thing. On the circle, you have a neutral point, okay? You have a neutral point. Other side, you have uniform, you have expanding, but on this point, you have a neutral point. Okay. <laughs> this also some, known a long time ago somehow, that every, F, every map in the C1 plus, every uh, C1 plus alpha map, such kind of map, it meets a unique physical measure. This was known some a long time ago also, but the proof is a little complicated. So let us try to take a short proof also. So we are starting the C Euclidean state. So now is C1 plus alpha. So first you consider the neutral fixed point. Uh, sorry, I needed to say that because this is one dimensional. Because one dimension is always entropy expansive, the ent metric entropy is always uh, same up continuous. The metric entropy and the entropy both always coincide. So you consider the neutral point. On this neutral point, it has uh, entropy zero, and it's Bernoulli to zero, the distribution of potential zero. So automatically, it belongs to the equilibrium state. Now say equilibrium state. So we have one. So we have two cases. Either the CU equilibrium state contains a unique atomic measure, they were finished. Because why? If it contains a unique element, this element should be physical measure for the basic cover of full of subset. Finished. So but it's not unique. If it's not unique, you take another ergodic measure. Different. And then what do we know? By the same argument as before, you can show this measure started for the patient formula. Why? We repeated the argument here. You have the distribution should be larger or equal to zero by the definition of the equilibrium state, and they should be smaller equal to zero by the draw inequality. So they should have satisfied the Payson formula again by the lesson Yang Lejabie, which should be absolutely continuous with respect to Lubeck on some piece. Which should be absolutely continuous with respect to Lubeck on some part. But here, topologically, you have expanding. Topologically, you have expanding. This part finally image, it's image of a coverage of her circle. So this explains to us this measure, if it's different to the atomic measure, this measure should be absolutely continuous with respect to the big with the basic cover of four measure subset. And this should be unique, because you have another one which also should be absolutely continuous with respect to the big and cover everywhere. It's impossible. So we can always find a physical measure. So the conclusion is the following. You can see the uh, C1 plus R map of the circle with a unique neutral point. You can see the equilibrium state space. Either it has dimension zero. If it had dimension zero, it has a unique element. 
this element is atomic, is a physical mesh. Suppose it's not, then we show that you have a dimension one. It's interval. And the one extreme point is atomic measure. Another extreme point is that the physical measure we would like. So you always, you know that here we don't use anything about the operator, something else, just to prove very quickly. Okay, let's try to go forward a little more. You consider the C1 space of such maps. It is a C1 maps with a unique neutral point. So case A and the case B, we know that, already know that both cases are dense. Both are C1 dense. Because if, in the, in the, if you are the, near the identity, near the neutral point, if it almost looks like x plus x, one plus half, half or, uh, larger equal to one, we know that it's atomic. Or smaller than one, it's uh, uh, physical, absolute continuous. So both are dense. But the similar argument of um, semi continuation, so there is a residual subset contained inside. Every one inside the, is a uh, unique element. The proof is exactly the same. So let's see. This is a little interesting. If you consider C1 such kind of maps, so C2, basically, you have two cases. Either the equilibrium state is a point or intervals, both are dense. But C1 generically, case A is much more popular than the second case. Okay. Uh -huh. So we give two examples. Let us try to continue to give more examples. I want to prove that same and very short. Okay, a similar result holds for the maps which are quasi anosov with a unique neutral fixed point. So this is like the following. You consider an anosov map, you consider this U direction, this is S direction. You consider a fixed point, you change this to be derivative to be one. Now this cannot be called U anymore, it can be called F. And on the F, and on this point P, should it be identity. Okay. For this kind of maps, we can also show that there always exists a physical measure. The say equilibrium state, or is atomic, or only one point measure, or you have two measures, one is atomic, or another extreme point is uh, the physical measure we want. Okay. And the C1 generic, such kind of maps, always exist a unique physical measure whose basic cover for the Weber subset. Okay, this will be another example. The Bonatti Vienna example. The Bonatti Vienna example is a, is a derived anosov. So you have a four dimensional anosov, linear anosov. So you have four directions. Lambda one is unstable, stronger. Lambda two is no, E2 is a, a weak, unstable and uh, weak stable and strong stable. And uh, you missed some, uh, somewhere, by some, uh, you do, do the uh, you know, bifurcation near some fixed points. Finally, you will get an uh, uh, open set of different organisms, which is robust and transitive, and it means a dominant stability, and no bound is hyperbolic. Okay. So this kind of example was approved by Ali Dazibi, in his thesis, that every C1 plus alpha deformorphism in this space, it meets a unique physical measure whose basin has a full volume. And uh, his argument depends on this on works of Alves, of uh, Alves, Bonatti, and Viana called the uh, most expanding. But uh, today we are trying to give a different proof, okay? So what's our proof? Yeah, like the following. This is a joint work with uh, Viana. For every C1 plus alpha deformorphism contained in this space, the equilibrium state is unique. If it's unique, we know that it's a unique physical mesh. Okay? And in, in particular, we should satisfy the passive formula. And the second thing, 
exists C1 rigid subset of diffeomorphism, C1 rigid subset of diffeomorphisms, of example of Bonatti Viana, such that every C1 diffeomorphism typically has a unique physical match. Okay. So the proof is quite similar as the proof before. So we need to explain a little more on this. The proof is a little more complicated. Yeah, this is new. Okay. Marcel didn't believe this before, but uh, it's correct. <coughs> so, in the Bonatti Viana example, it's like following you do both perturbation sum fixed point. And the other direction, so you have domain stability E and F. On the F, you have, you have your uniform stability outside. E has uniform uh, your contraction outside because you only change this map in some small regions, fixed points. So by this, what we can say is like the following. The bound F is uniformly volume stability and with speed larger than E level to epsilon. So the potential should be smaller or equal to minus two epsilon. And we did define a space of M epsilon as a space of inverted measures generated by algorithmic measure with entropy large. What's large means larger than epsilon. So basically we divide the space to two pieces of algorithmic measures. For the inverted algorithmic measures, we separate by epsilon. Larger than epsilon, everything is good. The same as the unknown solve. Smaller than epsilon may be bad, but it's small. Has no any problem with say you give states. Okay. This argument, this kind of work was begin from Busey, I think, and the later are used by many people. Okay. So basically we, the M epsilon is the space generated by this part. Generated by this part. Okay. And which I would like to say is exactly the same as the metric entropy for the linear and also case. The larger entropy are the same. So first we claim that the CU Gilliam states belong to the good part, the region good for us. So here let us try to recall the definition of CU Gilliam states. The measures such that the star entropy plus minus log determinant of the tangent map on the f direction d mu larger or equal to zero. Okay. We need to prove that this space is contained in the good part for us. Because in this part, you have seen you have a continuation, you have compact, everything is the same as in the unknown solved case. Okay, there are some proofs, technical things. Basically show any measure inside this part, the metric entropy plus integration, because this is smaller than epsilon, this is smaller than minus two epsilon, the sum together should be smaller than minus epsilon for this region, and we can kick it outside. We can kick it outside, only considering this part. And the proof is technique, and uh, let us skip to the next part. So we have it in the good space. Here's the definition of say gilliam states. So we know that say gilliam states belong to the good part. In the second step, we are trying to show that the say gilliam states contains a unique element. How to prove it contains a unique element is like the following. So first, because it contains this good part, the good part of the entropy is same up continuous. By some argument, you can remove it. Okay. Because you can imagine this, because all the side, everything is unknown solved. The same thing, just some real small regions, okay. And any Seuclidean state, you can show that along the F direction, the exponents are all positive. The exponents are all positive. So so basically, this should be minus lambda u1, minus lambda u2, all positives. 
larger equal to zero. So say you give them state finally, you change the language to this part. So what is this? The entropy minus the positive balance larger equal to zero. By the similar way, by the raw inequality, there should be smaller equal to zero. So we again get the Pace formula. If you get the Pace formula, then by the J. Behlens and Young, the measure should be absolutely continuous to respect to the F direction. Some part, some part. And then by some geometric structure, because if you have two, and you have some stable manifold, we are linking them together, we are implies you have a unique, because they will basically intersect to each other. Okay, so by this, we can show that for any uh, say two, say one plus alpha diffeomorphism in the example of Bernardi Viana, they say the state contains a unique element as a corollary, it's a physical measure whose basin cover a fully membrane subset. And by the same kind of same up continuous, you can show this space is a same up continuous function. C1 generic, we should be continuous. You can show C1 generic Bernardi Viana example, it has a unique physical measure whose basin cover a fully membrane subset. Okay, so we are almost finished. Now we are in the last part, finally. So now we are trying to give a new application about the Lorenzo tractor, its own flow. So Lorenzo tractor and the standard Lorenzo tractor <coughs> is a geometric, the geometrical tractor. You have a singular, singularity, you have strong slip direction, and here you have the section. And this section comes back, its return map should be like this. This comes back to here, should be like this, and it comes, comes to here. And this, this hint return comes to here, and then comes to this region. This in general is a geometric Lorenzo tractor. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with this part. I just uh, I proved this result. I don't know how to write it down, and I started something last year, and finally I know what it is, but I still, I need to take some time to write down, okay? <laughs> so this is uh, Lorenzo tractor. Now, the more, uh, there exists some generalization. The generalization is like the following. So, first we need to define the Lyapunov stable. A class is the upper stable if uh, this set contain, contain uh, there are uh, uh, a sequence of compact neighborhoods. Ah, uh, sorry, this should be changed. U1 contain, U2 and U2 contain U3. And uh, every neighborhood after your uh, image will shrink. And it's proved by, by Connie, for any homeomorphism, always exists some the upper stable class. So of course, attract is a diapano stable class. Lorenzo attractor is attractor, of course, it's diapano stable. But the diapano stable is not necessary to be, is not necessary to be attractor, example, contracted by Genetian, called the quasi attractor. Uh, what's a singular hyperbolic? Similar hyperbolic means the tangent space, you can imagine it's three dimensional. And then you have one dimension uniform contraction. Here is two dimensional, it's volume expanding. It's a volume expanding. In higher dimensional, it implies you have USS direction, CU direction, any plane in the subspace volume where you exponentially expand. Okay, last is Lorenz like if it is a single hyperbolic and it is the up no stable. But which is not necessary to be a tractor not necessary to be isolated, maybe accumulated by some other set, we don't know. Okay. Single hyperbolic was defined by Morales, Pacific, and Pujols. They showed the three-dimensional robust transitive flow. If it contains singularity, should be single hyperbolic. And in recently, the Shabogan and the Yishi and the uh, now when they proved that an, any non-trivial diapano stable class, chain class, over generic star flow are always single hyperbolic. 
On star flow means this flow after the perturbation, all the singularity and the purity points are always hyperbolic. Okay. Okay. So we have a class. We would like to study this class. So we need to know so what we are going to study. So there are two standard questions for us. The first thing, uh, Lorenz like cherry curtain classes, uh, the Lorenz like cherry curtain classes have the contain periodic points. Because this split is a single hyperbolic, not hyperbolic. So we don't know if it contains the periodic points or not. The second question, if the map is C1 plus R for C2, if it contains physical measures. These two problems have some good results and good understanding in three-dimensional case. So our standard way to start the three-dimensional Lorenzo attractor is to consider a section, like the section here, and you consider the return map, Pankala return map. The Pankala return map, which is a partial hyperbolic, you have strong contraction here, strong lamination here. Okay. And then you do the quotient along the stable hollow foliation, you get a one dimensional map because it has a one dimensional. The one dimensional map should be like this. And then people start the one dimensional case and come back to the two dimensional and then come back to the three dimensional. This is the standard way coming from the 79, maybe the construction of geometric model of Lorenzo tractor. By this kind of way argument, this, these two questions have been proved in three dimensional for Lorenzo tractor. Lorenzo tractor does not mean this one. In Lorenzo like a tractor which is isolated. By Alaouge and the Pujas, they prove the existence of periodic points. And by Alaouge and the Pacific Pujas of Vienna, they prove the existence of physical measures. In three dimensional. Why three dimensional? I have explained. Three dimensional, you need uh, this plane to be two dimensional. The plane to two dimensional, and then after projection, you get a one dimensional map. So the obstruction for generalization, because we said, Shobogan, Shi, and Lanwen, they proved that for any dimensional, you have, uh, have, have Lorenz-like trivial classes. But the argument now is only for two-dimensional, and not three-dimensional case. So the obstruction for generalization, we need the CU direction to be two. CU direction to be two, you model the, the stable direction, you get a, get a section, and the section, you model the, the stable direction of one-dimensional map. That's the first obstruction. And the second obstruction, the class should be isolated. I don't know why. Many people uh, confirm to me, should it be isolated, isolated, I don't know. But anyway, it's okay. We, we solved this problem. And uh, in order to get a physical measure, we need the flow to be C2. Why I need C2 is a problem like that. We need this map to be C1 plus alpha. If this map to be C1 plus alpha, we need the foliation of stable foliation to be good enough. The stable foliation, if we want them to be good enough, we need the map to be C2. Okay. Even for this strange, even for C1 plus alpha Lorenz attractor, I mean Lorenz attractor, C1 plus alpha case, up to now we don't know if there exists a physical measure or not. It so would be a little strange from C2 to C1 plus alpha, the argument, the standard argument cannot work here. Anyway, it's true, I will explain, give a proof, but by the standard argument, we don't know because by the holonym is bad. So what we are doing, I don't like flow, but I said I don't know too much about the flows. I know the results, but I don't know how to prove a calculation. I studied very hard last year, but uh, I think it's better to let myself to write this part. So we consider the time one map. Okay, for time one map, it's a diffu. No, it's a diffu. It's diff, uh, we, we like much more, because on the diffu, we have no singularity, right? So for the diffu, what do we get? Uh, dominant stability, one bundle is stable that bundle, another bundle is a CU bundle. So it's entropy expensive. I, I, I would like to say it's expensive, but many people on study flow tell me there are a lot of millions of definitions of expansion, some are false, some are correct. So let's forget that flow. So it's entropy expensive, okay? What's entropy expensive is defined by the bar one bore. Uh, infinite bound and bore, uh, it's entropy is zero. Because in this case, the bound and bore should be a segment along the flow direction. Okay. 
So if its entropy is expensive, the entropy is semi up continuous, the star entropy constrained to the entropy. Okay. And as what I said, you have a Lorenz like attractor. Yeah, this is exactly what we want. Okay. So you have uh, some class, you have a neighborhood, you want. And after one step, F, it will shrink inside. Okay. And the inside, we have good splitting. E S plus E C U. We have good splitting. Okay. So, as we and master proved, in this neighborhood, the C U Gilliam state is not empty. So what the CU Gilliam state in this special case should be the measure mu, the magic HP mu plus or minus the disintegration of log the determinant of the tangent map along the ECU direction along D mu should be large or equal to zero. This is the it's not empty. Okay. Here, we remove the star because the metric entropy is, the system is entropy expansive, it's a metric entropy semi up continuous. Okay. So we have measures now. So the first result we proved is that every Lorenz like attractor, no, every Lorenz like a chain recurrent class, lambda, contains a non trivial homogeneous class. So we don't use section. This is F any dimensional, not necessarily assume it's isolated. So what the proof? So you can see the equilibrium state or F in U1 is not empty. You consider it's in U2. It's not empty either. You take all this intersection. And then remember the metric range, the C equilibrium state. It's a semi up continuous function. So finally, the intersection is not empty. Why is it not empty? Because the metric entropy is a semi up continuous function. It's a semi up continuous function. Okay. You take any element here, u1, u2, they will converge to some mu here. The metric entropy of mu is larger or equal to the limit. Okay. It's larger or equal, and this is continuous. If you're larger or equal to zero, its limit should be larger or equal to zero. So we get our Euclidean state, which is supported on lambda. It's not empty. And then remember that the CU is volume expanding. CU is volume expanding definition. So the phi f, volume expanding means this is larger or equal to 1. No, it's larger than 1. So the log, so this part should be smaller than 0. Because the, the determinant larger than one, the log determinant should be larger than zero, integration should be larger than zero, minus part should be smaller than zero. This is plain to us. Any say you get state should have positive entropy. If it has positive entropy implies what? Which implies this measure is not trivial. This measure is not trivial, but only for the time one map. For time one map, not for the flow. You take the integration of the measure from zero to one. You get a non trivial invert measure for this uh, flow. Non, non trivial measure to put on this flow. And the best standard on Leo's shining lemma. What's a shining lemma? Because you have a singularity, you need your hyperbolic time. You need hyperbolic time to get the homogeneous class. But hyperbolic time cannot take it here. But you have some measure, non trivial. So it's some other side, you can take some hyperbolic time and take it back, use the standard argument, you can get the homogeneous class, okay? In fact, you can see this kind of argument in the paper of uh, uh, Gan Shi and uh, Lan Wen. Uh, the paper was uh, on, you can find it on archive already. So we finished the one part. You can see very quick, right? Without the calculation, I like it very much. And the second C, so as a corollary, so the Lyapunov stable chain recurrent class of a generic star flow should be isolated. So here I would like to take, a, I have 15 minutes, so I would 
talk about more thing or his history about this part. So what the star flow? <coughs> the star flow is the, the flows exist the open neighborhood. Such that any flow in this neighborhood, any uh, singularity or purity points, you give them, no. Any singularity and the purity points always have a body. Now, every critic, oh yeah, called critical elements. Every critical elements. Uh, Always have a body. So this class was uh, appeared in the study of the omega structure stable and uh, or omega stable and the structure stable. And for different morphism case, this was defined by money called the F1 system. And people are trying to show that this system should imply. Uh, XMA plus uh, no transfer in the section seems something like that. And uh, in the diffeomorphism case, it has been proved by Manier. But uh, for flow case, it is much more complicated. Because the flow case, you have a singularity. And for singularity, you, in particular in the Lorenzo tractor, it doesn't have a body. But nearby, you always have the uh, similar property. Okay. Always a singularity of purity points in the uh, Lorenzo tractor should be robust to be hyperbolic. So people would like to know that what the star flow with a singularity, without the singularity, it has been proved by Shopo Gang and Lan Wen that uh, it always structure stable and uh, bala bala, as good as what we want. But with the singularity, it's very hard to study. So one, one way for people want to ask it's the uh, star flow has only pieces, only finite many pieces, cherry cone classes. Okay. And uh, this was first studied by Liao. He considered the finite many things and sources. And uh, he proved it, used argument, a very company, very clever argument, almost in the 80s, something like that, or no, 85. And then, unfortunately, it's strange that uh, it's, this argument is very hard to understand. And the uh, shop again, he used a long time trying to understand the proof, and finally, recently, he revised, revised this example. Okay, it's a very clever argument. But this argument recently, Shabogan, and Dawei Yang, and uh, uh, Yang and uh, the Seven Colors, they get uh, a lot of improvement on this area. And the Shi, they get a lot of improvement on this area. So now the problem is, we would like to know that for stuff, what happens for cherry cone classes? But it's much more complicated. So one thing we can start is we can start the diapositive the class. The diapositive the class is, looks like it really looks like a tractor, but maybe not. For example, Christian, I said. So we would like to understand if it's isolated or not. So in order to prove the isolated problem, the standard way for us is first we get a good splitting, and the second is the splitting, we get the isolation. So we have the splitting proved recently by Shi Yi that this class is a single hyperbolic. So any Diablo stable cherry cone class of generic star flow is a single, a single hyperbolic, so it's Lorenz like. So we know that it's Lorenz like. It's a, we have a good splitting. So the problem is how to get this splitting to isolation. This is a problem. In order to do this problem, basically, you need to find some points along the f direction. You need to find some very weak expansion. You need to find some very weak expansion along the f direction. But this is very hard. Why this is very hard? You can see this case. You have one point. You can say, okay, we have your wall expanding. You have wall expanding, one length, go back, it will be a little longer. But a little longer, the problem is that the stable manifold singularity will cut it. Will cut it, then you should be shorter again. 
And then you go outside, go again, you should be longer, and then you cut it again. So the problem is that you have such kind of property, you will cut it. So we don't know that if this what is many can guarantee this this of expansion along the F direction. And uh, in three-dimensional case, Alawuj and the and the Pajas, so you consider the one-dimensional map and uh, did some arg argument to say that, okay, even cut, you can still get enough expansion, and this is enable for us to get the expansion, something like that. But that argument need an isolated property, need isolated from the other classes. But now we don't have it. So what do we get it? I, I, I said I don't like to, uh, to, to, to do the calculation. We don't like the section where we start the measures. I said, by Shabokan, she and Lan Wen, they have pronounced the cherry curtain class, they will stuff flow, I always think about it. We have good splitting. So we need to get the answer manifold. How to get the answer manifold? No. Or you can find any contains a hyperbolic period point, because the period point have a body always have a stable manifold, answer manifold. This is enough for you to prove the isolated property. But the problem is how to find such a kind of period points. Finished? No, okay. I need to come back. Uh, every Lorenzo like trivial kind class contains a non-trivial homogeneous class. It contains period points, okay? We have a measure. It contains period points, and we finish the proof. Okay? Uh -huh. Well, the last part, the physical measure, finally. So we consider C1 plus alpha flow. C1 plus alpha flow. And the uh, lambda alone is like a trivial class. We claim it always has a finite many physical measures whose basins cover full volume subset. How to put this? It's like this one. Every measure, as what I said, we should, should satisfy the pencil formula. Should satisfy the pencil formula. Pencil formula. Then we have some trouble. If we get the passive formula, we would like to say which is absolutely continuous respect to the unstable direction. But there are some problems. So, by the literature behind lesson young, you have passive formula. The measure is absolutely continuous respect to the unstable direction. There is a hypothesis. The hypothesis, you need the map to be C2. You need the map to be C2. Why you need C2 is like the following. Because here you have a zero set is bounded. You have the flow direction. And you have the unstable direction. Here you have exponent to zero. Well, Lija Bihlas and Yang, they need the system to be C2. They need to do a quotient along the strong unstable direction to the standard direction. And they need the quotient to be Lipschitz. They need the quotient to be Lipschitz. C1 plus alpha, we don't know. Only C2, it's OK. But in this case, we are lucky enough. Why we are lucky enough? Because you take an unstable manifold along the flow direction. Flow, you change this unstable di di direction, you take the flow, go forward, start to go forward. It's another unstable manifold. So the manifold lamination, it's image on the, it's shifted on the flow, get the lamination force. And this automatically is C1. Because this is on the flow direction. Okay. So this enables to us to show, you need to repeat the proof, but it's easy, to show that the disintegration, anyway, this system is C1 plus alpha, but the disintegration along the unstable lamination is absolutely continuous. If it's absolutely continuous on the unstable direction, and along the flow direction, you can change, you can, wash, you can, you can move it, so this measure is absolutely continuous with respect to the CU direction. Okay, you have good density along the CU direction. And you have a stable direction, you have get a physical measure. Okay. And every measure in the C U genome state has uniform size of basin. So it contains only finite metaphysical physical measures whose basin cover full of subset. If it's a transitive, you have a unique one. Okay. And in particular, if you consider the Lorenz like attractor, the geometric Lorenz, C1 generic Lorenz attractor, but it means a unique physical measure whose basin cover full of BMS subset. But the similar similar argument or generic argument. Okay. So you get a Lorenzo, get a Lorenzo, you get a C1 generic Lorenzo tractor, 
but it's a, it means a unique physical mesh. Okay. And uh, no, not finished yet. I have two minutes more. So, uh, so this are, there is a lot of other applications because I worry I don't have enough time. So I have five minutes, right? Okay, I need two minutes more still. It's enough. So we would like. So there was another question: When the people draw the picture in the seventies about to use a computer, they just choose one point and take the image, and they take another image. And they maybe draw uh, one, one, one million times, and you get the picture. And they claim this is a Lorenzo tractor. But I don't know why. We should have explained why, right? Why? Because it's just some, we know that there are some mistakes. One point x by the flow time, you can say always time one map. And they, the computer always has some, uh, some errors, some errors. Another one, and another one. Why well, you can say that the picture you draw is the uh, Lorenzo tractor? I don't know. So here, we need to prove a result about the radial perturbation. So you need to show that the Lorenzo attractor, after the radial perturbation, there is a unique CU equilibrium state for radial perturbation. Okay? And this, we proved it for the time one map. And uh, after, the after the radial perturbation, there is a unique CU uh, equilibrium station measure, something name like that. So, you so this implies you take a typical element, you take this kind of things, generic things, they will converge to a measure uh, for, for the random system. You get a measure. This measure is exactly the uh, CU equilibrium state for the new system after perturbation. And this is close to the ES1, and this is measure, typical point. We convert to that measure, and exactly what we want. Okay. So give, this gives a mathematical explanation for, the, for this part, to the, draw the picture where it should be, looks like the Lorenzo tracking in general. Okay. So finished, thank you.